I'm Christine Persichetti. From a life of crime to a life following Christ, a parishioner at Saints Peter and Paul Church in Williamsburg turned his life around with the help of the church. Curse News' Katie Vasquez is here to talk about his salvation story. Hi, Katie. Hi, Christine. Drugs, money, and violence were once a focal point of Johnny Chavez's life. For most of his teens, he was involved with a gang and even spent time behind bars. But it turns out God had a different calling for Johnny's life, and now he's helping others find the right path. When Johnny Chavez walks around South Williamsburg, he's reminded of another life. This is one of the blocks where I used to hang out. He grew up here in a small apartment with his parents and two sisters. But that all changed when Johnny's parents divorced when he was a teenager. I had to find some sense of gratification, some sense of belonging, and my friends were my, my refuge. Johnny got involved with a gang and started selling drugs. We were selling heroin, a lot of heroin. At 17, he was arrested for armed robbery. It was the final straw. Johnny wanted to change his life, but he didn't know how. There was nothing that was making me stop. I was making a lot of money. Until Johnny's godfather invited him back to church. And God opened the door for Johnny to find a new life. I went uh, to the Eucharist. Some of them were talking about drugs, about alcohol, and nobody was standing up to accuse them. Nobody was and uh, uh, judging them. So I felt, I felt like I belonged there. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Now Johnny is paying it forward as a member of the Neocatechumenal Way, a spiritual movement that aims to deepen the faith of its members through ongoing formation. He devotes his time to showing others the right path through catechesis. We help them so that this, this calling, which is very fragile, can maintain a sense of a spark. He now has a devotion to his faith. He is passing on to his eight children. That is the biggest gift today that I am receiving from the Lord, that he is helping my children to stay in the church. They're staying in the church. It is a blessing because today is hard to stay in the church. Despite his past, Johnny says he has no regrets. So if you ask me, what would you want to uh, change of your life? I will say nothing. Because if I was to tell you that my parents could be together, that means that I would, not, I would have mes missed the encounter of Christ. He knows it was all part of his journey, and God is with him every step of the way. On top of his work helping the youth in the church, Johnny is also a teacher at Grand Street Campus High School in Bushwick. There, he also tries to steer young people away from gangs and drugs. Christine? Wow, what a story. Thanks, Katie. Many Catholics in the Diocese of Brooklyn will soon be going on a journey of their own to take part in the annual March for Life. Dozens are planning to travel down to the nation's capital in about two weeks to support the unborn, and you can join them. The diocese is providing two buses to D.C. One will depart at 6 a.m. on Friday, January 19th from the diocesan office in Brooklyn. That's at 310 Prospect Park West. At the same time, another bus will travel from St. Kevin Church in Queens. That's at 4521 194th Street in Flushing. For more information on the buses, just email pilgrimage at diobrook.org. Before the marchers head to D.C., their support for the unborn will begin in Brooklyn. The diocese will have a holy hour for life the night before the march. That's Thursday, January 18th. It'll kick off at 8 p.m. at the Cathedral Basilica of St. James in downtown Brooklyn. Thursday marks World Braille Day, a time of the year when researchers and advocates for the visually impaired promote Braille literacy. Less than 10% of legally blind Americans read Braille, a number that continues to decline every year. But as Curse News' Jessica Easthope reports from Manhattan, organizations like Xavier Society for the Blind are working to reverse the trend. Skylar Kovich can't convince everyone that it's necessary to learn Braille, even in the midst of a Braille literacy crisis. There is still this, this push to do everything with audio and not always kind of push people to take all of the options that they have. And so that, that is one worry about Braille uh, declining. Skylar is a technology program lead at the Braille Institute of America in Southern California. 
He was born blind and learned Braille when he was five. Not only for reading books, but also for make presentations a lot easier. Uh, participate in church life a lot easier. It's, it's an important skill to have. There's not one reason that points to why Braille is becoming less common. <laughs> Braille is expensive to manufacture. The books are long and heavy. Technological advances like audio guides and screen readers have made not learning Braille an easy choice for nearly 90% of blind children, according to the National Federation of the Blind. <laughs> Skyler serves on the board of trustees for Xavier Society for the Blind in Manhattan. The society ships Catholic faith materials in Braille, audiobooks, and large print to about 2,400 people across 20 countries for free every year. People go to church and they just take for granted that the missalette will be, you know, uh, in the pew for them to use. That's not available for people who are blind. Other types of technology don't lend themselves to doing that. Executive Director Maliki Fallon says promoting Braille literacy to those who would benefit from it is stamped into their Catholic identity. There are people in the blind community who feel that children learning to read Braille helps them with their intellectual development. As a kid, signage, reading comprehension and retention are some of the reasons Skyler was thankful he learned. Now as an adult, his reasons have changed. Reading to my son, he's just so excited that, that I can read aloud and really make me happy. Technology and devices like e-readers and refreshable Braille machines have also helped steer blind people toward Braille. For those who are Braille readers and those who aren't, the key is access. In Manhattan, Jessica Easthope, Currents News. To learn more about the Xavier Society for the Blind and support their mission, you can visit XavierSocietyForTheBlind.org. Finally tonight, think you're good enough to get one of your paintings inside St. Peter's Basilica? Well, now's your chance. The Vatican has announced a new art contest, challenging artists from around the world to paint an original version of the traditional 14 Stations of the Cross. The winner will have their work displayed in St. Peter's Basilica and get a cash prize of $130,000. Here are the rules. Artists have to submit 10 original works. If you're picked, you will then submit an original sketch of the 12th Station of the Cross, Jesus died on the cross. Applications open on January 8th. To submit, just go to the official St. Peter's Basilica website, basilicasanpietro.va, and good luck. That is this current News Update. I'm Christine Persichetti. Thank you for joining us because we are putting your faith in the news. Hope to see you again next time.